name of our trade. This was THL Dean. And this was a gap down. Now, I play professional bear straps. This is a gap down. However, it did not work right on the day. I'm going to go over um, what happened on the one minute chart. But let's just look at the bigger picture here of the, of the daily chart. I liked this this morning when I saw it, it was up around here. And then I said, boy, I really hope it doesn't get under 650 before the open. And I said I liked it this morning, and it literally dropped a dollar since I said I liked it. I liked it like really early this morning, and then it just kept dropping, 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 dropping. I'm going to go show you the 15 minute pre market chart. And literally, this thing was down at 6.30 before the open. I said, I was so upset because when they drop like that off pre-market, sometimes that's past the move. And that's just, sometimes it's just how it happens. So it really worked a lot before the market. That being said, it still could have worked in the day. It still could have worked fine on the day. It didn't, but it could have. And that's why you have to watch these to plan because you never know. The bottom line is the target was here. This is the target. They're really dropped in the morning and right away we're going to go over the one minute play, but the point is it didn't really get to the target, but it was not that far away. Remember, these things are areas. You have to have exact numbers and exact targets, which I did, and I had them written down, but these are still areas. And the thing is, it's got down and it rallied. That's all that it did. I mean, you really see here what it did. It, it just got down to, to a support area, and, and that's what it did, and it just didn't work right. But you never know until it opens. You just have to watch it. Here is the 15 minute, and we're going to look at the pre market chart. Here, this is what I did. Look at this thing. I got up in the morning, it was gapping down here, and said, oh, I really like it. And I just sat here and watched it. And it just fell all the way down here. I mean, it, literally, it fell like that. There was so much volume in this this morning. You know, it, it was weak. I mean, it was really, really, really weak. But right now, we're in a strong market. The market didn't really go anywhere today, but the fact is, the market is bullish right now. We are in an uptrend in the market. I'm not saying that's the reason this didn't work, but I'm saying this really wasn't a fantastic gap. It wasn't based on earnings. It was some kind of news, and we're in a bullish market. So, you know, there really wasn't a lot to look at today. You read it, you go through the system, you say, hey, I think I like it, but I don't know if it's going to work right, so you watch it and see it and play it. And this is what it did in the morning. Let's go to the one-minute chart here. So here was the entry right here. It set up, it opened, it did this, this was, this bar was moving so fast. This is a huge bar for this stock. It's like 45 cents for a one minute bar. It was huge and it was moving fast. Held the high of the day, not a big problem. Okay, great. Entry was six, 609 was the entry. Stop had to be over 632. So it was 20 cents stop for this one. It looked good, it was great. It went down, it went under the low of the day. But as soon as this thing drops down and goes under the low of the day, and doesn't really drop. Okay, so it triggered right here at 9.32. Did three red bars down. When I think it's under the low of the day, this thing should have went ugh, down, and it didn't, because it went under the low of the day, and it should have, and it didn't. When as soon as this bar opened up green, boom, I'm out. It didn't work right. It did not work correctly. And, and I was up money in this by this point here, okay? So the point is, the entry was here, you were up money, but you didn't get a big move out of it. You got to take it off here when it flips around and goes green because it went under the low of the day and it didn't swish down under it. And we really needed that to happen. And when it didn't do that, that's a problem. There's lots and lots and lots of people that take these things and they take them. And the entry is under the low of the day. I never do that. It's a terrible entry. Why? There's a perfect example. There's a perfect example why you don't do that because there's lots and lots of times when these things aren't going to go fluidly and they're sometimes going to fail and they just stink under it. And then they flip around. And if you're entering there, you actually lost in this play. Whereas if you took it here and got out here, you still made money. You didn't make a million dollars today in this. No, but hey, the thing didn't even work right in the day. So if you can make money in a play when the stock doesn't work right in the day, that's terrific. That's great. Because the play is so tight and so clean and so nice and so good. You know where to get in and you know where to get out. And you know when something isn't working right. And this is the problem here. The low of this is 592, the low of this is 587. That that was the problem. It just went five cents, stinked under here. And then when the next bar didn't open under this bar, it didn't open and go red, boom, you have to take it. Because it, this, doesn't, this doesn't act right. This isn't acting right. It's not like it had some big, hard move down and then needed to do a green bar to rally. It 
it only went 25 cents down here, okay? So if this had been some huge big move in three bars, then I'd be okay with a green bar and I wouldn't panic and say there's a problem. But the fact is it only went 25 cents. It did gap down big. It was almost at the target and actually was near a couple numbers. These are the numbers I had written down for target. This is when I looked at it this morning when I woke up. $6 was a target. It went under there on the first bar of the day. But 592 was a target. Look at that. And it did it the first bar of the day. Um, 590 was a number. 562, 556. So those are the real targets on that 200, and it, it didn't get there. And then after that, I thought it could have gone to $5, but it, it didn't work. So anyway, so you're out of it here. So fine. You're waiting. You're watching. It still could work on the day. You don't know what's going to happen. You have to watch it. You still think, hey, this is a pretty good gap. It's weak. It is weak. And it didn't go over the high of the day here. It didn't go over the high of the day here. This isn't an entry. Didn't set up here. It looks like it's going to. But don't get tripped up in this. Remember, something has to go red when it triggers. Nothing here. Okay? One red bar does not make an entry. And then when it went up here and it went over the high of the day. Now, I know this isn't crazy over the high of the day, but still... The fact that it dinked under the low of the day, then went up and dinked over the high of the day, I'm not feeling all lovey-dovey about this now. So I got to wait. So fine, it comes in again. Okay, great. Maybe we're going to start to set up again. Maybe we're going to do a sell setup. Maybe we're going to do a lower high and a lower low again. Nope. Doesn't do it. It goes over the high of the day again. I'm immediately off this thing. There's no way I'm taking this short today. It's 10 o'clock. It's too late, and it's going over the high of the day once, twice. Off of it. I just can't short something like that. It's too late in the morning. When these things go and they work, and they're, they're supposed to work right and fast, they go in the morning, they go right away. And I don't give them two, three chances over the high of the day. This, When something keeps going over the high of the day, it's making higher highs and higher lows, which is showing that it's going up, not going down. All of this is great. The 8 pushing down, the 20 pushing down. But when this starts to make a point down here, like a pivot, and then starts to go up, See how these things are slanted up? That is the problem. That does not look like something that is in a downtrend. In fact, it looks like something that's in a smaller time, time frame uptrend, which is what it did do. Now, I'm not buying this. I'm not buying this in any world because this is a bearish gap. Just because this didn't work right in the day, it doesn't mean it's not going to work. In fact, I'll guarantee you anything that tomorrow this stock is going to gap and open somewhere in this bar. It's not going to open up here. It's going to open somewhere in this bar. It's probably going to hold the high of this bar. 715. Let's see if that's the number I've written down. I've written down 720 and 710. It went up to 715. The point is, this is not something that you would say, oh, well, this is just going to rally now to a creation. No, this is still a bearish gap. It still showed weakness today. Unfortunately, it just had so much of the move that happened pre market, which we see over here. Yes, it could have continued. It has to continue a little bit, but not much. But once we get the sign that it's not going to keep going here, after things under the low of the day we have, and it goes green, then on the next bar we have to take it. Because we were up money here. Not a lot, but some. And this was a nice stop. And we have to make sure we book the money when we're up and something does something that's a problem. And this is a problem. We have to make sure we get our profit. And if you don't want to take the whole thing off, take at least half, okay? So then no matter what, you make money. But after this bar, if you didn't take it off here, you better be out in that bar. Don't even give it to stop. This is not a good sign, this big green bar here. Not a good sign. So if you didn't take it here, please be out by here. Don't give it your full stop. Anyways, this could have gone back and worked again, even though it had dinged a little bit over the high of the day, but it didn't. And then, like I said, after the second time over the high of the day, there's just no going back here. And don't be fooled into this. I can't tell you before I figure these things out how many times I'd be fooled into thinking that I'd be shorting up here and shorting again and shorting, shorting, shorting now. You know, this this wasn't a good sign here. It's different than some of these other ones I showed in the in the class we just did when something sets up and doesn't go under, doesn't trigger yet, doesn't go under the low of the day and just opens and rallies or does a little wiggly jiggle, jiggly and then rallies. And then goes over the high of the day once, then sets up, then goes, okay? This is set up, triggered, went under the low of the day, failed, rallied, went over the high of the day, went over the high of the day again. Do you understand? So it's like, this is a sign, this is a sign, this is a sign. These are signs that it's not going to work right in the day. So this is different than the other ones we were talking about in the class, like GEF, where it didn't really...
really trigger and go under the low of the day and then fail and flip around and up, up, up. No, this did all these things, which says to you, okay, maybe there's a problem here. All right, maybe there's a problem here. Maybe there's a problem here. This has to be a valid entry that you have to take, though, because you don't want to miss it if this, if this goes, because this is a weak stock, it was a decent gap, and it could have gone, like I said, to $5. And the entry would have been with a 20 cent stock, you know, and it would have ran $1.10. So you have to take it, and you made money in it. You just didn't make a lot because it didn't work right on the day. But the fact that you could have made money in a stock that didn't, that ended the day like this, shorting something that ended the day like this, the fact that you can learn how to play like that to take my class, that, that's beautiful. Beautiful. So, anyways, this is Melissa with the stockswish.com. I'm just going over the gap play for today, which was CHLD. And if you need more information, please email me at melissa at the stocks.